Welcome back to The Full View. Let's talk about fast fashion now. Local retailers have complained that Chinese online retailer Shane is exploiting tax loopholes to undercut them. The fast fashion retailer has made gains around the world, including in South Africa. Shane says it's committed to ethical business and wage practices, and it does abide by South African law. To discuss, we're joined by Michael Lawrence, who is the executive director at National Clothing Retail Federation of South Africa. We're joined by Etienne Flock as well. He's the National Industrial Policy Officer for Clothing and Textile Workers Union, SACTU. Thank you both uh, gentlemen for, for joining me tonight. Let me start with you, Mr. Lawrence. So the National Clothing Retail Federation um, represents the likes of Trueworths, Woolworths, Mr. Price, Fashini. Am I right to say that most of your members are selling imported clothes as well? Um, so this isn't about locally made versus foreign or anything like that. It's about the importing model. What is your concern? Well, our concern fundamentally is this, this is a company that around the world seems to have ridiculously low price points. So that seems to suggest that um, something is not quite adding up. Now, uh, we've got all our procurement folk um, looking at whether we should be doing better um, in, the, in the different retail members that, that, that are part of the NCRF. Um, but over and above that, we're, we're of the view that maybe there's some elements of, of, of regulation that we are actually paying for that needs to be looked at differently. Are there tariff issues being avoided? Are there other costs of business that um, that, are, that are part of the statutory or, regu or government regulatory environment that are, are costing money? We we just think it, it merits a slightly closer look, a lot a lot closer look at the moment, and and we're not sure that we have the same levels of what I call community of accountability um, as as currently exists with the South African retailers and consumer groups and the unions and the manufacturing yeah. sector. All right, so you're suspicious, but you don't have any uh, major evidence is what you're suggesting. Could they not just be doing things better? It sounds like um, they, they, they're a shipping giant, they've got distribution right, they get partners um, right, and, and they just have learned to ship very quickly direct to your door. Well, precisely, it's the direct to the door matter that, that does concern us. Um, we 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 believe that there there may be some some gaps in some of those regulatory and operational spaces, whether that is the way SARS is applying their minds to the the, the tariff duties, um, whether there are some other processes around the manufacturing back end that we we're not able to see and keep to account. Um, yeah, they, look, they're doing better. That's that's certainly. Um, a part of being competitive, and that's great. Um, but we need to just make sure that everything's fair. And we, for us at the moment, the numbers are just not adding up. And so we've just asked for um, all of us who are, as part of the clothing retail master plan, um, we, we're just asking for the community to get together yeah. and just make sure that we are all, in fact, playing on a level playing field with the same set of rules. Do, do you think Shane is running sweatshops? We don't know. Um, that's certainly one of one of the options that could exist. The, it could be that product is being dumped. It's a lot easier under WTO rules um, for dumping. It's a lot easier to see dumping when it occurs in large container loads um, rather than product by product. We don't know if we're dealing with um, substandard products that that are badly made. We don't know. We we just. Having to, we again, as I say, we're at the we're at the outset, at, at the beginning stage of just looking at exactly what it is that we we're having to deal with here, and and whether in fact um, there are smarter ways of doing things, or better ways of doing things, or more legal ways of doing yeah. things. We, we've got to establish what what the dynamic is, and and it's a big problem. This is a worldwide problem. Um, you certainly U.S. retail has taken a huge knock um, from from the operations um, of Shane and and the like. Um, as have a number of, of, of other very competitive clothing operations around the world. So it's it's clearly not unique to us, but it, it, uh, we believe that we have the ability to investigate it um, um, fairly thoroughly. Yeah. Okay, Mr. Flock, uh, what, what do you believe the impact is going to be or is on labor in South Africa? We, we are very concerned about Shin's entry and, and its growth as well. We, we think it's, it's bad for jobs. We think it's bad for workers. We think it's bad for the economy. And we think it's bad for the environment. 
And so the more this uh, company is accessing uh, South Africa and taking up market share, the, the more it means that our efforts as the industry together with the retailers, our efforts to, to grow jobs in terms of our master plan is being undermined. And, and had this been done on a equal footing and on a level playing field, you know, then, then it would be something that one would respect. But, but our concern is that it's not the case at the moment. And, and so for that reason, we are suggesting that we have a closer look at, at the model of importing the, the model of business and that we make sure that all duties are being paid and that all taxes are being paid. Are you talking about retail jobs or jobs actually in uh, textiles, in, in manufacturing? I think in the minds of many South Africans, the textile industry is all but dead in South Africa. Some attempts to revive it, um, but most of, of the clothing is imported. Unless we're talking about traditional uh, clothing, the, the really high premium uh, quality goods. So at the moment, about a third of clothing that you'll find in, in the major retail shops are manufactured locally. And so it's still a significant industry that exists. It's an industry that supports uh, enormous job creation in, in uh, industrial pockets throughout the country, in major cities like Durban and Cape Town, but also in peri-urban areas like Puta di Chaba in the northeastern Free State, or Ladysmith in, in northern Natal. And, and so it's still a significant job creator. And for that reason, the, the industry got together at the end of 2019 and signed and, and uh, agreed to a master plan. That master plan looks to create 120,000 jobs by the end of 2030. And we think that Sheehan's entry does not fit in with that, that kind of national objective of creating jobs, of growing uh, both manufacturing and retail jobs. And for that reason, you know, we need to think carefully about whether this is the kind of uh, 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 um, uh, business that, that we want to welcome in South Africa. And as I say, especially taking into account that it's running a business model, which we think really um, uh, should be in the dustbin of history. It largely does this on the back of exploiting workers and yeah. it's really bad for the environment. Are, are, are you sure about that? I, I just have to um, say that Shen has denied that. It says it does respect human rights. So at the end of last year, Channel 4, the, the British television station, had an extensive expose about Sheehan's uh, supply chain. And, and one of its major findings was that Sheehan workers only got one day off per week, sorry, per month. Worked, uh, they worked 18 hours per day and got very, very little wages for, for the work that they had completed. And, and there was an extensive expose on, on this. And then in addition, the, the model that it uses of creating fast fashion, which does not last beyond a couple of weeks or a couple of months, means that, that the product that ultimately lands in South Africa may end up in the dustbin very soon, may end up in landfills very soon, and it's transported to, to South Africa in a way which is not good for the environment. And that's why we say we think that this bus business model is one that may bring short-term gains to, to consumers, but in the long term is not good for South Africa. Mr. Lawrence, you skirted around something that has been written about that the, the possible loophole is that Shen delivers small packages rather than big packages. So they are not subject to the same uh, duties or, or taxes. Is that possible? How does it work? Uh, and would that be a problem with Shen then or, or with our law? Is, is that a loophole? Well, this is a discussion we are going to be having with the DTIC and with and with SARS. Um, the, the extent to which the there the can be full investigation of every package o already, SARS is far too stretched to to investigate every container load of product that comes in. If we now if we're now facing a problem where there are are smaller parcels and and we we don't always know exactly what's what's in the parcel, what's dutiable. Is the correct amount of tariff being charged? Have the, has, the, has the correct labeling been done? The National Consumer Commission would have something to say about that. Um, that, that creates a whole host of problems. Um, my organization is involved with the consumer goods and services arm, but we, we don't know to what extent consumers are going to have protection under our very, very, our very good Consumer Protection Act. And, and a number of bodies and entities that have, have come into existence to protect 
the consumer. We don't know that we we have a fundamental and a functional form of engaging with with uh, on behalf of the consumer rights that oh, yeah. that 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 may be violated here. And to Etienne's point earlier, we don't know what about what the um, sustainability issues are that come with this model. We've got sustainability as a critical part of the master plan. So, so really, there are a whole bunch of elements here um, where we, as a South African community of of the CTFL value chain, are actually trying to do things very smartly, very responsibly, very sustainably. Um, and and now we have a we have a player come in that that is is very difficult to understand. And and quite frankly, is is disrupting, and and it's it's important that we we take up the challenge and make sure that that all parties are being fairly treated in this process. Yeah, including customers who some of them like getting the cheap products. So um, this has to be fair. We will follow it. Uh, thank you both for outlining your concerns. Uh, the Department of Trade and Industry is investigating, so we will follow that very closely. Thank you uh, for being with us. That was Etienne Flock, SACTWU's National Industrial Policy Officer, and Michael Lawrence, the Executive Director at the National Clothing Retail Federation of South Africa representing the big clothing retailers.